Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching, hanging out, all that stuff. You know, I appreciate it. I do hope you're staying safe, healthy, and uh, creative, I guess, out there. Um, it's fun to be creative. I'm trying to be creative, and I'm continuing to play with photos from Iceland. By the way, if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. I make tutorial videos using different software products to edit my image, uh, images, and um, it's fun. And if you're not having fun, I think you're doing something wrong. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm in Luminar 4. I've got a picture from my Iceland trip. Um, I actually thought I did a video about this photo because I edited this photo, you know, a month or so ago, and I really liked the outcome. And uh, I really liked the photo to start with, but I also liked my final result. Anyway, I thought I did it and realized I never did. So here I am. I'm correcting that. Let me show you the photo. Here it is. Uh, we were on Diamond Beach, which I'm sure has a real name, uh, but Diamond Beach is what everybody calls it. And uh, we were out there for sunrise, and most of us were standing over here to the left, including me, looking that way, because you can kind of see uh, to the right of the frame and all the way out of frame. To the right was the sunrise itself. So a lot of us were shooting the waves coming uh, in and kind of going back out. So we were doing these long exposure kind of things, which is super fun. Like, yeah you know, set it for like a second or a half second or whatever, and you just capture this beautiful flowing water. Anyway, um, after a, a few shots of that, I kind of came this other way to kind of try a different angle, and I really liked how the these uh, this wider iceberg, chunk of ice, whatever, on the left is sticking out. Um, and, you know, it is a black sand beach, so that white chunk of ice really contrasts with that. Um, I like the colors of the sky. I like the mountains in the background, and I like the flow of the water. I just wanted to make the colors look different and really bring it to life, add some contrast, add some color pop, brighten the whites, do that kind of stuff. So I turned it into that and um, it was a lot of fun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset these filters and we're gonna jump into that stuff right now. Okay, so here we are on the base layer with uh, no adjustments. There it is and here it is with the light tool. So let me open that, a little bit of warmth and tint, uh, a little bit of smart contrast, took down the highlights and I believe yeah, I bumped up the whites here, and that's something to think about. You can mess around with the highlights a lot, but when you're working with things like this where you're trying to pop that whiter color, it's not a highlight usually, it's a white, and I find that that works a lot better. Um, and so um, I popped the, uh, the whites about 18 just to kind of brighten those up a little bit, but that's a good little thing to try. There it is before and after the light tool. And then next I popped over to AI Enhance. Uh, and here, as you can see, I was trying to balance out the light, trying to control the exposure, also use the sky enhancer to tone down that sky because it was fairly bright and I wanted to pull that back. And as you saw in the final photo, maybe you don't remember, but it's a bit darker and I'll, I'll get to that here in a little bit, but basically I wanted to darken that a little bit so it's not too bright and distracting because that's kind of uh, when you have a heavily contrasted image, uh, which is what I'm going to end up with, your, your eyes kind of drawn to the brighter parts of the photo. I think that's kind of natural. You see bright stuff and you're like, oh, bright stuff, dark stuff, you kind of ignore. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that I, I don't have the sky too bright. So anyway, that was part of that. So there's AI Enhance overall, both sliders there before and after. I feel like that's uh, helping quite a bit. Okay, next was color and pretty simple stuff here. I actually took down the saturation. I know, I took it down, it's hard to believe. Um, but I bumped up the vibrance, which I do a lot. Um, that was a little bit of a color ch uh, change, not a huge, but there's before and there's after. It's, it's very minor, actually. I'm not even sure how well you can tell, but the next thing I did is pop over to Landscape Enhancer and I gave that some golden hour, a pretty significant amount, like a 49. And you can see that it kind of brightens up and pops those warmer tones a little bit. So, so far I've gone from that base image to this. Now I skipped over the creative tab, went straight to portrait, and in this case used a little bit of Orton here, and uh, that was about 22 as you can see. Uh, and you may have noticed there's the before and the after. The after is a bit more contrasty, and that's something that Orton does uh, in images. It'll kind of pop some of the brighter parts and add a little bit of contrast, which is exactly what I'm going for here. I want to brighten up some of those whites and those lighter colors, like in the surf and in the icebergs. Um, but then darken the uh, the sand and create a little bit more contrast. And finally, on this layer, I went over to the Pro tab and I started with the Advanced Contrast, and it's a pretty minor difference. Uh, it was just a little bit in midtones. I'm not even sure how well you can tell in the photo, um, but or, or excuse me, in the video. Next was Adjustable Gradient, and that was a fairly big shift. Let me show you one more time. There's before and after. So in the top, and by the way, the orientation, I just left it in the middle. It's fairly well uh, uh, distributed that way. I think it fit the image. So in the top, 
just by the way, if you're not familiar with the tool, you click on top or bottom and make adjustments accordingly. But in the top section, as you can see, I, I uh, increased the contrast and pulled down the warmth. So I made it a little bit cooler in the top. And then in the bottom, I did something similar. Bumped up the contrast, cooled it off, but I added a little bit of vibrance as well. And my last two steps, uh, the next one on this layer was Color Enhancer. And you can see that really brightened up those warmer tones and really created a little bit less blue and a little bit more warm. So let me show you one more time. A bit more blue and now a bit warmer looking. So I added some warmth on the brilliance and warmth, uh, bumped up a little bit on split color warmth, and then down here in color balance in the shadows, I took the cyan and red a little bit more to the red, left the midtones alone, and the highlights I did a bit more to the red instead of the cyan. And so one more time, there's the before and the after color balance. You can see I'm getting a little bit more warmth showing up in those brighter areas, including in the surf, and that's okay with me. I want that to be a little bit brighter and a little bit of warmth there is totally fine. So my next move on this layer and my final move, in fact, on this layer is split toning, which I love. It lets you separate highlights and shadows and pick a saturation level and a color for each. Uh, in this case, um, I did something I don't normally do, which is I left both the highlights and the shadows uh, hue or color the same, which is in the warmer tones. Um, and the saturation level of both was actually fairly similar as well. Highlights, you can see I did about 23 and shadows of 27. So if you look at the before, there's a lot more blue in the photo and the after getting a little bit more of that kind of pinkish purple magenta maybe kind of color. And that's me kind of amping up the sunrise and the reflection of the sunrise colors in the, uh, the moving water there. So that was really it for this base layer. Next, I actually had two erased image layers simply because there were all these spots. Um, so I went through and I erased those. Um, and then I realized there was also a bunch of things over here that were um, uh, like power lines and that sort of thing. So I went and erased those as well. So uh, I may have done that in the opposite order, but I basically had two erased image layers. Let me click that again. Um, and that basically got rid of all those distractions. Spots in the sky, clearly a bad thing because those are, um, I think, I, uh, not dust spots, but like water droplets had gotten on my lens that morning. Uh, but then also the uh, the power lines and things like that that were over here were just a little bit too distracting. So what I recommend doing is zooming in and using a very small brush on the eraser to get rid of things like that. Uh, and then when you zoom back out, you're not even going to notice it. Um, I left the cars in. Uh, they didn't bother me, but you could do that as well if you wanted to. Regardless, uh, that was the, uh, the, the next two steps, basically. Two erased image layers. And then I wrap it up with another adjustment layer where I make some more edits to the photo and to the colors. So first thing here is in the light tool. And basically I just took down the highlights pretty significantly. And as you can see here, I uh, masked it in. So the light tool, as long as you're not on the base layer, you can mask it in. So I just took a gradient mask and I masked it into the sky, as you can see there. Uh, and that's basically just to reduce the, uh, the brightness in the sky. So let me show you the before and the after. So a little bit darker, not a huge amount, but I'm gonna work on that a little bit more here in a minute. Okay, next was AI structure in here. I did a negative 45 with a boost of 10. And then again, that was just in the sky. I basically took the mask from the light tool, copied it and pasted it here. Same exact gradient mask, same exact location in the photo. All I did is basically smooth out the sky. After that, I was off to color. And here I skipped the stuff in the top. I went straight to the blue and I just took down the saturation, negative uh, 15. So let me show you the before bit more blue in the photo and to be honest i really like it but i felt like it was a little too blue and after a little bit less blue part of that was um i don't mind it so much in the sky but i wanted to avoid having too much blue in these chunks of ice i wanted them to be a little bit wider because um, i want them to stand out against the um uh the black sand a little bit better and i think if they're less blue they're going to stand out better so there's the before and the after Okay, next stop was Detail Enhancer, and that was some small and medium details, and all I did is just brush that in selectively. So you can see here just a little bit across the uh, mountains and, of course, on the chunks of ice here in the foreground. So just wanted to amp up the details. I obviously don't want any detail in the water or the sky, and also there's no point in bringing up detail in the sand because it's so black, you're not even going to see it. And besides, even if you could see it, I wouldn't want it there because I'd rather that be kind of smooth because that's another, to me, another bit of contrast is you have an iceberg that's kind of crispy and crunchy with some detail against something that's smooth. 
It's also that this is bright and that's dark. That's a nice contrast as well. So kind of playing on that theme of contrast. In this case, a contrast in terms of the amount of detail versus just contrast in light value. Okay, and the last thing is over on the Pro tab, I got adjustable gradient another time, and you'll see that immediately in the sky. And again, as I said earlier in the video, wanted to darken that sky. Um, as I said, the brighter objects in a photo will often draw your eye, and I don't want the sky to be too bright. So in the top here, I just dropped the exposure, increased contrast, pulled down shadows and highlights, uh, and gave it a little bit of warmth, and that's because I felt like it was a little too blue. Uh, and then in the bottom, I just added a little bit of contrast, which is going to help that uh, icebergs and uh, like the foam here and stuff really stand out against that black sand. Um, increase the highlights, which again is these brighter parts, so a pop a little bit there. Uh, and that was the photo. So there's the before and, uh, and after adjustable gradient. And there's the before and after the entire photo. So my base photo, fairly blue, not a lot of contrast. Um, and a real no uh, solid pops of uh, brighter parts of the photo. Everything looks kind of blue, even in the highlight and areas that you expect to be white, like the chunks of ice and kind of the, uh, the running water. And I think now we've got a lot more white, um, a lot more uh, brightness, value, if you will, or luminosity in those areas, which I think stand off really well against that black sand. Um, and then we got some nice color in the sky, and some of that's reflected in the, uh, in the water over here. Now, I like the water uh, having some of that color reflection, but if it's too much for you, you could go in and you could go over here. Uh, actually, I've already used color, so what I would do is add a new adjustment layer, and then you could take saturation or vibrance here and reduce them and then just mask that in to that section if you wanted to reduce it. Again, I kind of like it because it was a pretty nice sunset. We were very lucky, uh, like two mornings in a row, one morning in a nice cave and the next morning over here on this beach. But it had a beautiful sunrise, uh, but the light was pretty intense over there. So I'm okay with that because it's kind of, to me, dropping in um, from out of frame. And you can see that sliver of sunrise here that you sort of mentally helps you kind of register that, okay, Jim's not just playing with saturations. There's a sunrise going on and the light's coming in. That's kind of how I think of it. Regardless, if you didn't like that piece, easy to fix in Luminar. Uh, but there it is one more time. There's the before and the after. And just to do, to do the sliding, there you can see there, um, if you look right uh, in this section along the mountain, you can see that big power line there. And I think there's another one over here somewhere. Um, oh, there's some down here uh, in that area. Anyway, that's a before and after. Much higher contrast. The only other thing I might would do, and it depends on the look that you want, I left these little pebbles here in the foreground end. Uh, in the photo because I thought they were kind of interesting, but with the eraser, you could take them out if you felt like it was somewhat visually distracting. It doesn't really bother me. Easy enough to take out if you want. Okay, my friends, that is that photo last time. There's before and after. Pop the contrast. Pop the luminosity values in the key areas where I wanted it to be brighter. Pop the colors uh, and control the light like in the sky and things like that. Overall, um, a lot of fun to edit, to be honest, and frankly, probably one of my favorite photos from Iceland. Um, but knowing me, I'll probably come back in six months or a year and just edit it completely differently because I do that a lot. So um, that's a fun of digital photography, my friends. We just get to go back and do it again if we want to. But that's it. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Come back and watch my videos if you would like to, please. Um, I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. I'll see you soon, my friends. Take care and adios.